Hi there, family. Welcome to the word for today. I have a question for you. What would it take? Just think about this. What would it take for your family, your close friends and, and colleagues to somehow conclude that you are God or that you are a divine being or a divine personality? <laughs> I mean, it's almost laughable how that, that could be a possibility. But then that is exactly what happened in the scriptures. Jesus had his family, his friends, his tribesmen. And of course, they, there was no way they were going to believe he was anything spectacular. But somewhere along their journey, they came to that firm conclusion that Jesus was Lord, that Jesus was divine. And so today we are going to take a look at the steps that led to the conversion of the, the family of Jesus. And are taking specifically the story of James, the brother of the Lord. So today, that is exactly what we are going to do. And today's video is actually the concluding part of the video we had done about the, the life of Jesus and how that, despite the, the, the lack of trust and belief by his own brethren, Jesus had a particular posture. And we saw, saw the posture of Jesus, how that, despite the skepticism and the unbelief by his own kinsmen and close people, he had a posture. And that posture we learned from it and how that we can apply that posture in our everyday work as believers. So kindly take a look at that video. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description below. However, for today, we are moving straight into the conversion process of James, the brother of Jesus. So the first scripture we're going to take in this particular conversion story, we start with the book of Mark chapter number 6, verse number 3. It's already highlighted now, in Mark chapter 6, verse 3, we see Jesus had gone to his hometown and this was what, when his own kinsmen saw him teaching mightily and had heard that he worked miracle. This was their testimony. This is what they said. In verse number 3, they said, Is not this the carpenter's son? Note it. The son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and, jo and Judah and Simon. And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. So we see this first set of, or, or this first scenario where the family of Jesus just give him a wonderful dress down. And are like, I mean, who taught him these things? Who does he think he is? I mean, we know his brothers. Is he not? We know his father, his mother. We know his siblings. So he wants to lord it over us. And so we see this initial introduction and skepticism to the ministry of Jesus. However, as time progressed, there was a point in the life of Jesus where he was about to embark on a journey to, 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 to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. And here was this time his own brothers said concerning that particular journey and concerning his ministry. So we take that in the book of John chapter number 7. Let's take from verse number 2. Now, it says, now the feast, verse number 2. Now the feast of the Jews was at hand, and his brethren said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the work that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. And in this wise the disciples were wrong there, not the disciples, the brothers of Jesus were wrong, in that they thought he sought fame and popularity, which wasn't his goal at all. It continues, if thou do these things, show thyself to the world. And it's concluded by saying, for neither did his brethren believe him. So here we see, again confirmed, that same posture of the blood brothers of Jesus. They did not believe he was anything. And so this was their description and their antagonism towards his ministry. Now let's fast forward to the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus had resurrected, he had showed himself to his disciples, and now persecution had broken out in the church, and Peter had been arrested and imprisoned. And an angel of the Lord rescued and delivered Peter out of the hands of, of Herod. Now, after his delivery, or after his rescue efforts, Peter now goes back to the, brethren, to the brethren, or back to the disciples. And in the book of Acts chapter number 12, verse number 17, we see an interesting response, Acts 12, verse 17. We see an interesting response from the, the the church and we are we now get a glimpse into how things had progressed it says but he beckoning unto them with a hand to hold their peace 
So at this point, Jesus, Peter had gone to the to the to the to the believers who were praying for his deliverance, and now they were so shocked and amazed to see him. Then Jesus, Peter, hushes them up and tells them, "No, they should just hold their peace." And so that's the point we find ourselves at. He declared unto them how that the Lord had brought him out of prison, and he said, "Go show these things unto James, and." To their brethren, and so we see here the introduction of of James, the brother of the Lord, into the Christian fold. He was now a part of the believers. He was now a part of the disciples of, of Jesus. Now we are not told firsthand how the conversion process of this brother of the Lord how it happened. However, we are given a hint in the book of First Corinthians. So I'll go to that hint in the next in the next verse. But we are not. We don't have a vivid description of the step-by-step process that led to the conversion of James, the brother of the Lord. I mean, these brothers of Jesus were skeptical at the beginning. And now suddenly we find one of them being among the disciples. What had happened? Something definitely had shaken their belief system and their faith. For them to now begin to acknowledge that our brother, whom we played with, whom we had fun with, who suddenly we heard is performing miracles and, 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 and had claims of divinity, they had come to that point now that indeed what we heard is no rumor. We have had an experiential or an encounter with the Lord. And we believe that our brother is the Lord. And isn't that amazing? Oh, how I wish the scriptures gave us a vivid description of what had actually happened. And the encounters they had, they had gone through, the processes that led to such a radical conversion. I can imagine how, how a beautiful of a story that would have been. But hey, we don't have it. We suddenly see James, the brother of the Lord, having converted. And then we move to Galatians chapter 1, verse number 19. It gives us more testimony about the life of James, the brother of the Lord. Galatians 1, 19. Galatians 1, 19. This is the story of the Apostle Paul. Paul was talking about his own personal conversion and his own growth process in ministry after the Lord had revealed himself to him. To hear Paul. And Paul bears witness to something in the book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 19. Paul says, but other of the apostles saw I none. So he was saying that he didn't go to see any other apostle after his conversion. Save James the brother of the Lord. Or save James the Lord's brother. Paul concludes by saying, now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Paul was ready to put his life on the line and say, I went to see James, the brother of the Lord. What a moment, what a conversion process. Paul, the great apostle, who wrote virtually two-thirds of the New Testament, goes to see the Lord's brother, James. And this same Paul gives us a hint as to what happened or how, as to how James, the Lord's brother, came to that moment, came to that aha point in his life to realize that my brother is God. My brother is the Lord. And so we could take a quick look at that in the book of 1 Corinthians. A quick one, a quick one. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 7. Again, this is the testimony of the Apostle Paul where he, he describes how his personal encounter. Apostle Paul never met the Lord Jesus physically. Whilst Jesus was walked on the earth, he and Paul never had an encounter. However, after the resurrection of Jesus, now Paul has an encounter with the Lord. And Paul gives us a quick summary of that process that led to that, that encounter. And within that summary, we have a remarkable story. So in verse 3, let's start from verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 says, For I delivered unto you first of all, all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Verse 5. And he was seen of Cephas, that is Peter, then of the twelve, that is the core twelve disciples of Jesus. After that, he was seen of about 500 brethren at once. I mean, there are so many witnesses to the resurrection, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He continues by saying, of whom the greater parts remain unto present, but some have fallen asleep. Let me get this highlighted so that I don't lose it. Let me take this out of the way. Verse 7. 
After that, he was seen of James, making reference to James, the Lord's brother. So we can conclusively say that James had a radical encounter where he saw his own dead brother, his brother that was tortured, crucified for his claims of Messiah, of being the Messiah. And then I guess probably James heard rumors about his brother having resurrected. And he might have been skeptical about it and said, well, here goes these disciples of my brother. He seriously might have done a great brainwashing work on them for them to begin to spread such rumors. And then he suddenly has an encounter with the Lord Jesus. He sees his own brother. Probably it was in an open vision. Who knows? But then he has an encounter. Then Paul continues by saying, then all of the apostles. He says, and last of all, he was seen of me also. He was seen of me also. As of one born out of due time. And this, beloved brethren, is the testimony of Paul. Seeing how that James, the brother of the Lord, got converted and believed in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. I have something interesting to conclude this particular teaching. The testimony, if you previously or up, all, up to this point, we've looked at testimonies from the life of Paul. We've looked at testimonies from Peter making mention of him. Now, what does James himself have to say? You would love this. You would love this. The testimony of James himself, the Lord's brother. In the book of James, you will love this, I promise you. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 1. Take a look at this. This is James himself writing a letter to the, to the early church. And see how James describes himself. He starts by saying, James, a servant of God. And of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Greetings. But this is what I love. He calls himself a servant. Let's do a beautiful yellow highlighting. James calls himself, himself a servant of God and a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't say James the Lord's brother, you know, he was my, he's my brother, we, we, we grew together as kids, we used to play, no, he says he's my Lord. And not only is he my Lord, I am his servant. He doesn't say, I am his, his junior brother, he doesn't say, I am his disciple, he says, I am his servant. Oh God, only God knows the degree of encounter that James might have experienced. For him to come to that point, the growth, the transformation, for him to move from a skeptic, to a believer and now to realize the lordship of Jesus Christ over his life. And that is the beautiful thing about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our encounter with him has got to be personal. And once you have a personal encounter with the Lord, your life changes. Christianity sees, sees being a religion that is being preached on TV or social media or being forced down your throat. Christianity now becomes a living thing because you have a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. And every believer must have that, that personal encounter. Then you would know beyond reasonable doubt. You wouldn't need any convincing because you have encountered the Lord himself. So let me say a prayer for us as we conclude today's teaching. And my prayer for you is that as you've heard these words, may the Lord Jesus Christ himself, through his Holy Spirit, give you an encounter, an encounter that will change your life, an encounter that will change your understanding of Christendom, an encounter that will give you a personal revelation of your Lord Jesus Christ, and bring you to that point in your Christian work where you know that indeed Christ Jesus is Lord of all. Thank you very much, family, for today's for being a part of today's teaching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, Maranatha, our Lord truly liveth. All the best. See you in the next video.